Welcome to this Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Olmus, joined by Mark Warwood. Mark, we've got eight races in the return 2017 at Ascot. Really looking forward to it. Happy New Year to everyone. The feature race on Saturday will be the Miss Andretti Stakes, honouring one of WA's greatest ever sprinters. Wasn't she a champion indeed? Before we get stuck into the race card, though, let's have a look at the conditions. We're expecting 35 degrees there at Ascot on Saturday. Track should be a good four and the rail will be out nine metres, but all up, it should be a, a fair day of racing. Last time we were in the nine, it was quite fair. So let's get stuck into this race card. We'll start with race number one, the Amelia Park Handicap, over 2,150 metres. And Mark, this is a staying race. We've got a few, we've got one dropping back in class and a, a couple having a crack again for another win this preparation. The horse we're going to look at in the replays, I done it when it at Ascot on New Year's Eve, leading all the way. And still last is Hurst to blame. Now he makes his move on Mosserati, comes at I done it, but I done it won't surrender at the 200 metre mark and I done it found it. He kicked a length and a half, Mosserati now under the whip from top of the was a quite regal as burning down the outside with a late run. I done it in front on the inside top of the was a Mosserati. I done it all. A handy performance there by I done it was only second up on that occasion, jumping from the 1600 metres all the way up to the 2200. Early on in the day, that was race one on that occasion, and this is race one here as well. So the wind wouldn't have picked up. That tends to favour the leaders. So he should be in this again. Out of that same race was pre selection. She was desperately unlucky up the inside, but still ran a nice race. And top of the was gets another cushy run from barrier one should be in the mix mark what do you make of those three chances look i think i done it did well last time but i certainly think he was favored by the wind or the, the, the lack of it at that point he meets um, pre-selection four and a half kilos worse for what was a pretty narrow margin i expect pre-selection to turn the tables there that's my on top selection she was pretty unlucky last start i think she would have won the race had she got a run in the straight no blame on eddie cochran there it's just one of those things i think she'll be very hard to beat on saturday alan matthews has his team flying at the moment we've also got kirov boy who drops in in class was beaten five and a half lengths by the eventual Perth Cup winner and star exhibit so has to be given a chance to start before that beaten only 3.3 lengths by Kiora Kutu so they'll do their normal tactics here uh, with Molly Clark claiming three kilos I'll take off mid race and turn it into a true staying test I can certainly see it uh, running and running all the way home for a win I've got it on top number one Kirov Boy from the six I done it four pre-selection and the five Dreamtime Dancer I've got number four on top, that's pre-selection. From number two, Outlaw Pete, up in trip. From number seven, Topa de Waza, and number six, I done it. Race number two on the card at Ascot is the Chinese New Year race day for February. Maiden over 1,400 metres, and Mark, this is anyone's race. It certainly is wide open. The horse we're going to look in replay is Zossum was finishing in second at Pinjarra last time out. At the 300s, Azimus from Lady Emily. Cool Tat is down the centre. Then came Buster Andy back on the inside. And further back in the field is Pro Mutual at the 200, though. And Azimus in front. Buster Andy is getting up on the inside. Then Lady Emily. And further back is Cool Tat. Buster Andy has raced to Azimus. Buster Andy has taken the lead from Azimus. And Buster Andy has won. From A nice performance there by Zosimus. Osimus led on that occasion and was just caught late by Buster Andy, only beaten a short neck. Those look to be the prominent form lines in this race. We've also got coming out of that Onapara, Stratus Philly, Magic Minton, of course, Cool Tat, but uh, Zosimus, I, uh, likely to open up favourite mark, claiming three kilos is Molly Clark, looks to get the weight advantage as well. Yeah, she's, uh, she's had three uh, placings since uh, she's come back from a spell, and in a wide open race, you'd have to consider her a chance. We've also got number 10 there, Onapara from the Keith Mifflin Yard. Brad Parnham jumped on here, only beaten two lengths in that same race, uh, was doing its best work late. Yes, certainly. It was impacted in the straight, held up at uh, a critical stage. And number 11, Stratus Philly, might not have seen it there in the replay. It was finishing off very well for seventh. It missed the start by five lengths, only beaten two and a half lengths on that occasion. So, look, she has to be a serious consideration, the mare by Stratum. I think she's the one to beat. She's got form behind Tonka Tough and uh, General Husson not that long ago. Those two horses would be odds on to win this race. And what is a very, very open race, I'm going with number 11 on top, Stratus Philly, ahead of the two, Zosimus. Number Number 10, Onapara, and 12, Magic Mint. I'm number 11, Stratus Philly, from number one, What Did You Do? Number 10, Onapara, and number seven, Don't Let Tomo Go. Race number three at Ascot is the Morley Growers Plate. It's over 1,100 metres, and it's for the three-year-olds. 
And there is one three-year-old, Mark, who is uh, certainly on the up out of the Jim Taylor yard. Yes, yeah, certainly is. His name is Caracapo. He's unbeaten from two starts. We can have a look at his run on New Year's Day when he led all the way. Largo in the straight at the 300. He needs slip. Caracapo, rain spangled impact, tracked him through. She's coming with a big run. This is the one they've had a real go at, but Caracapo led and is now starting to really hit overdrive. He's beaten off spangled impact. His run was short-lived and Caracapo really dominated late in the race and won very... A really nice performance performance there again by Caracapo leading all the way as he did on debut he's got a lot of upside this uh, son of Hassan I think he's really really talented the question is is he going to get an easy lead here and I think the emphatic answer is no and at the prices I think I'm willing to take him on even though I do think he's a very talented animal yes he certainly is one on the up uh, that speed that you mentioned Mark there looks to be plenty in it with the likes of Dainty Tess and Atacama Sky all pushing forward Chinstrap's the one that will sit just off them from barrier four and be there late in the finish. He's made enough to rate starts, but I think he's better than that. And I think this race sets up perfectly for him. His PB was um, three starts ago behind Sweet Order over 1,100 metres, back in trip suits. I think he, he's one to uh, watch at really good odds. Yeah, and even those form lines behind Gadding certainly proving to be very, very good. Forget the run in the Listeria, just had no luck and a little bit wide on that occasion. Number seven, Deadly Shot, certainly took the eye at a recent trial. It's still a maiden after two starts back in August. August, ran at Belmond, was beaten by the likes of Get Over It, who was certainly on an upward spiral there for Trevor Andrews, and then beaten by Samovar along head. We know what Samovar came out and did, won the Group 3 WA champion Phillies, and looks to have a very bright future ahead of her. The trial was without blinkers, and it hit the line very nicely. It comes to race day with the blinkers. I'm expecting vast improvement, and we'll get a dream run in the race. Yeah, look, I like the form behind Samovari. I would say, though, that that run behind Samovari was before Samovari went over a trip, so I do question how strong it necessarily is, but um, I take all your points on board about the blinkers. I've got it on top, uh, the Simon Miller train gallop. A deadly shot ahead of number three, Caracapo, from the four, Belter, and five, Chinstrap. I'm going to take a punt on number five, Trinstrap, from number three, Catacarpo, number four, Belter, and number seven, Deadly Shot. Race number four at Ascot is the Darrell O'Malley 60th birthday handicap over 1,600 metres. It's a 72 plus affair and one that ran very well last week on the quick seven day backup is our replay horse. Yes, it's Sasso Circus, William Pike Sticks. Let's have a look at his run at Pinjara Park. Glory Landers first to see the judge trying to shake off, ready to fire. Sasso Circus pushed her past the grey, and here comes Juicing Carrots. Grand Lorado running into a dead end, 11 seconds from well back. Sasso Circus has gone to the lead, pushed her past. Juicing Carrots wearing them down. Juicing Carrots pushed her past. Sasso Circus, Juicing Carrots, Juicing Carrots. A nice third there by Sasso. So Circus behind Juicing Carrots. Those form lines may prove to be very good going forward. This horse only has a short burst at the end of his races of about 100 metres, but from barrier four, he can settle close enough and certainly be in the finish. I like his numbers, this preparation. Only one poor run this campaign. Pike is the key here. He's ridden this horse six times, four wins, one second, one third, lots of other good course and distance numbers as well, the one to beat. Pike certainly is the key, he jumps off Pinzu for Sasso Circus, so Clint Johnston Porter takes the right here, claims two kilograms and last week uh, had no luck up the inside at Pinjarra behind Red Publisher. Yeah, it's not often you bag William Pike, but I'm going to do so here. It was one of his poor rides. I am taking the lead that William obviously rates Sasso Circus higher than Pinzu. Yeah, back to a track and distance, which Pinzu loves. Number seven, our finest moment. Jerry Noski's been in outstanding form, riding a double at Pinjarra last week, and then the listed summer scorcher winner on potent secret there in New Year's Eve at Ascot. She's in great form. This gelding by Dennis Singer is in great form as well. The form lines behind State Solicitor, Antique Dream and Poonamu all look to be very, very solid. Yeah, completely forgive the run last start. Missed the start, flew home off a slow tempo. Certainly a place chance in this race. I've got number nine on top, Sasso Sergs. Looks very hard to beat with William Pike jumping on. From number eight, Pinzu. Seven, our finest moment. And six, Grand Arado. I've got the same trifecta. That's nine, Sasso Circus. From eight, Pinzu. Seven, our finest moment. Three, Terra Force.